fighter, but he definitely is in shape, and he will hurt you. The Bulldog fight tail of the tape. Waterman, 41 years young against Gracie, 25, about even in height. But look at the weight. Waterman, 274 to 220, but a big reach for the taller Gracie. Troy Waugh, the third man in the ring for this main event. Three five-minute rounds start now. Roger Gracie in the black trunks. Waterman with the light brown trunks. Yeah, both of them, I believe, expect us to go to the ground. Waterman said that. Shoots. But you're playing right into Gracie's strength doing that, aren't you? Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if he gets him to the ground, if he can keep out of those submissions and land those, those big bombs that Paul alluded to. Just a few moments ago. Laying in the Gracie guards akin to laying in a, a loaded bear trap. This is the only man in the history of the Abu Dhabi Submission Wrestling World Championships to submit all eight of his opponents in one day. He cleaned out the heavyweight division, then he cleaned out the unlimited division. Something that has never, ever been done, as you said. A lot of those Abu Dhabi matches go the distance because a lot of guys play for points. He didn't waste any time. <laughs> Must have had an appointment. If you're wondering if you're, if you're new to this, what chance does Roger Gracie have the much smaller fighter? But it's what the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is all about the young, frail, sickly Helio Gracie fighting up on bigger muscle men years ago. But now Gracie on his back. And not only on his back, but uh, Waterman in side control. And I, in training, I hate being in a wrestler's side control. But look at the nice leg work of Gracie. He's trying to uh, utilize the, I like to call it leg reach, reach all the way around and try to regard, and he does so. I asked Roger about taking a punch for the first time in competition. He says, I've been training for five weeks with my brothers and my family, and they've been punching me very hard. I am ready for whatever Ron has to bring. And attaining that guard position because of his superior flexibility. And Lon, you alluded to the fact that someone looking at Roger might not think that he had a chance against a larger, more muscular opponent. But he's got less muscle bulk to get in his own way. He's cultivated flexibility as opposed to muscular size. And it works for him with his particular fighting style. And there's the hammers you spoke of. And immediately when he drops some hammers, Roger Gracie switches the hips. And there it goes. Oh, that's in there tight. Gracie trying to get the arm, he's trying to hang on to it, but Waterman shakes him loose. That's the strength of Ron Waterman. That's what's going to make this fight so interesting. Nobody expected Waterman to be able to hang with Gracie technically. Very, very few people on the planet can. But he's so enormously strong that it levels the playing field. Another arm bar and Here he comes up. again, yeah. A lot of times when you do stand up in an arm bar like that, you end up popping your own arm out. It's not something that I would do. A lot of wrestlers do it and are able to power out of it. A lot of wrestlers feel no pain. And you see Roger not even attempting really to strike. It's, it's Waterman who's going to get the leverage and bring the hammer down. And he postured up nice and straight and landed a bomb. Roger, I would imagine, will want to keep, as they say, keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer. Yeah. Gentlemen, let's work. Let's go. And he's working both legs up by. And look once again, Waterman. Watch Postures out for that up. right hand. And there it goes. He missed it. Uh, Roger, he's wise to that trick now, swimming his left arm inside the punch. Roger bleeding from his, his right ear, his left ear, excuse me, where he took one of those punches. Look at him switching the hips. Going for arm bar once again. It's locked. That it is locked. A tap out. It's, it's over. It's over. My goodness, Roger Gracie in his MM debut from seemingly the oblivion of defeat gets Rod Waterman exactly where he wants it, gets the arm bar, and Waterman taps out in round one. The Gracie's flooding the ring jubilantly and understandably so. There is no more dominant fashion in which Roger Gracie could have established himself on the world stage as to step into an event the size and stature of Bulldog fight and pull up a submission win over so capable an opponent early in the first round.
They've been doing it for over 80 years, and Roger Gracie keeps the success going. Yeah, I'd much rather see Ron Waterman keep that arm and tap out than bite it off and get hurt. He's a great, great man, an evangelist. And you gotta take your head off the Waterman's bat. We'd rather see you doing that and fighting. Exactly. Rather than take a long time off from fighting and not tap. And for the uninitiated, what would that lead to had he not tapped out? You're talking about a whole shoulder dislocation. Yeah, you're popping the elbow out. You're, you can pop the elbow capsule. And for me, I like to drive home. All right. Yeah. <laughs> for the official announcement of that victory for Roger Gracie, let's go up to our ring announcer one last time, Damian Pinto. Ladies and gentlemen, this one comes to a close at the 3 minute 38 second mark of round number one by arm bar tap out. Your winner in his first ever mixed martial arts competition, Roger Gracie. That's exactly how they expected it to go down. They probably figured that Roger would take some punishment, but he knew exactly what he was doing every second. Now, Waterman was in full control here. Gracie, as I said, likes to use the reach of those long, lanky legs. And here's the first one he powered out of. Wrestlers like Waterman, just by looking at him very, very strong, are able to power out of those often. But this one is the one that caught him. Look at the nice, smooth transition with the hips. And he fully extends the arm. And Ron and had no choice. No choice. You either pop, either tap, or you snap. And you see Ron Waterman very disappointed. Roger Gracie accepting his ring of victory. And lifted in victory by his family members in his MMA debut, exactly how they expected it to go. And let's go up and hear from our winner, who is with our own Paul DeMauler Lazenby. Well, a lot of people called it, but saying is one thing, doing is another. Tap out early in the first round, world Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu champion, world submission grappling champion, and now winner of the main event in the first ever Bodog fight, major pay-per-view. Roger, how are you feeling right now? I think now that everything is finished, I feel great. Especially after the fight, I was able to pull an arm lock. It was beautiful. In the beginning, I felt like he had very heavy hands. Give me the ear once. So coming out of submission grappling and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, all you've done so far is non-striking competition. Coming into this with a striker as heavy-handed and as hard-hitting as Ron Waterman, how much of a change was it for you? How much of a shock was it? Yeah, it's a big, it's a, it's a huge difference because most of the techniques that you, that I usually apply, it's hard to do them here, but the guy can punch you, so it's hard to set up. It's different, it's harder, but it's good to make it work even more, you know. Okay, if you would, please take a look at the monitor and talk us through the end of the fight. Yes, at that point, Hazel was screaming in the corner. Not there, but a bit later there, just before the arm lock. Go for the arm, go for the arm. I was a bit afraid, but the first time he picked me up. So I wasn't, I wasn't feeling very comfortable, but then I was climbing my legs up. When I put it on, that was tight. Tighter than the first one, so. When I was on, I knew he wouldn't pick me up. And that was good. So, Hodger, a lot's been said about the fact that you are coming into this fight as a Gracie. The Gracie name is literally martial arts royalty. The Gracies are the innovators that got the whole mixed martial arts ball rolling in North America. How much of that pressure did you feel coming in here? You have Henzo in your corner. You have the Gracie name on your shoulders. How much did that affect you? Yeah, it's a big pressure in that when you represent the family, because I. I'm not fighting only for myself, I'm fighting for my family also, so, and that, but, yeah, I think it's a pressure, but it's in a good way, because we have more support, they make me train hard, even harder, to try to be, to make me be better than what I can be, so, 
is a pressure, but it's something to push you forward more. So with this first fight and this first win out of the way, what are your career goals from here and in? What do you want to do next? I believe you're going to do a few more fights. I done a first now. I, I'm going to try to keep continuing to fight MMA, but I also want to fight grappling and jiu-jitsu. See if I can do both. Okay, now we've already made the big announcement. Fedor Emelianenko has just joined the Bodog Fight Organization, and he's seen as the most dominant heavyweight in the history of mixed martial arts. Is that a matchup that you might potentially be interested in in the future? I think ever since sports, you know, I mean, he's a great fighter. For me, he's the number one in the heavyweights now. And I'm just beginning. I'm not saying, you know what I mean, that I will fight him in the future, but ever since sports, I'm just starting now. We'll see what happens next. Okay. Now, we saw absolutely incredible grappling skill from you. But as far as your stand-up game is concerned, how do you plan on improving that and bringing that to be a, a bigger one of your weapons? Yeah, for sure, I'll be working a lot on my standing up. It'll be hard to match with my ground, but I'll, I'll try my best. <laughs> Who are you training with to work on your stand-up? I do what hands was. He got. I'm not doing much. I got a training in, in London where I live. He helps me train in Clear Shield, but I've been doing just a little bit, not much, not as much as I should. But I believe now when I come back to London, they're gonna push hard in that part. Well, wish you all the best of luck, and I sincerely hope that we see you in the Bulldog fight ring again very soon. Congratulations, Roger. And back to you, Lon. Roger Gracie, winner by tap-out submission in the very first round.